If you're looking for a great but affordable everyday carry folding knife, then this selection of non-locking folders might surprise you. Sometimes referred to as a gentleman's pocket knife or gentleman's folder, these knives do have certain benefits over many other types of knives. For example, they are often more compact, easier to maintain, less threatening around non-knife people, more affordable and benefit from a more minimal design aesthetic. So with that in mind, we have here a selection of great affordable non-locking knives, all under £70 and with a blade length of three inches or less, all the knives featured here are legal to carry in the UK and no doubt in many other countries too. So let's start with the most affordable. And this is the Opinel Inox 5 non-locking knife and this one comes in at eight pounds. Now, Opinel are a French maker which started making knives in 1897, so some real heritage here. The range of knives is denoted by a number which relates to the size of the knife, and the one we have here is a number five. And the design hasn't changed in over a century, with the exception of a locking system which was introduced in 1955 and further improved in the 90s. The handles are made from French orange beechwood. The blade type here is a clip point in satin and the blade steel is an inox stainless steel. So a fairly basic steel as you would expect for the price and it will need regular sharpening if it's in regular use. The blade length here is six centimeters and the overall knife length is 14.2 centimeters and it weighs in at an extremely lightweight 16 grams so a very lightweight knife this is a friction folder so there's no lock back spring tension holding the blade in place which you would get with a slip joint knife care must be taken when pulling back with a knife like this so the blade doesn't fold onto your fingers if i compare it with a 91 millimeter victorinox which is my normal daily carry you can see the blade length is actually pretty similar but the blade on the open L on this number five is much thinner so this is what you would call a knife for light duty tasks but who can argue at that price this is the Luna from real steel and I've owned this one for some time and I'm a big fan of this knife there are lots of different versions with different blade steels and handle materials. Some run into well over £100. But this version, which has a D2 blade and G10 scales, is seriously good value at just £30. There are multiple colour versions in this configuration too. And this one here is a black and bronze version, as you can see. And I also have this red version from Heine Haynes. It's an exclusive for them and it's red and brushed steel. This logo here on the blade denotes that this is a design from Poltergeist Works based in Poland. And in my view, this is a really nice design, both when closed and when open. This is a slip joint folder. It has a drop point blade and a brushed finish with a flat grind. The blade steel used here is D2 carbon steel, which is a higher end steel. It is harder than the basic inox steel and it should hold an edge really well. The blade length here is 7.2 centimeters and the overall length of this knife is 16.5 centimeters. And the handle material used here is G10 with a really nice grip pan. The weight on the knife is quite low as well at 50 grams. As a quick comparison with the Victorinox 91 millimeter, you can see that the Luna is much more substantial in every way. We have here a quite thin deep carry pocket clip and it is removable, but it is in a fixed position. We also have here a lanyard hole as well. As far as handling goes, the back spring is quite light, but safety is not really in question here because it has this hard stop point there. Really nice to see that helps it stop folding onto your fingers inadvertently. But also there's some jimp in here at this grip point, which does a great job of preventing it closing. Very little chance of that folding because you can feel the pressure on your fingers. And if it does, 
you've got that early stop point there as well. It's really easy to get the blade out with this cutaway here and this full length nail nick and this readily takes an aftermarket thumb stud if you wanted single handed opening. There's no liners in here but with the G10 scales it is rock solid and it does make for a very lightweight knife and the G10 also is very grippy and that adds to that safe feeling of use. All in all this is a great knife at a great price. This is the Boca Plus Tech Tool City One and is another one I've owned for some time. This comes in at around £38 and is a great quality slip joint folder. The blade here is also a drop point. It's a polished blade with a hollow grind. And the steel used here is a Sandvik 12C27 stainless steel, which is a step up in hardness from something you might see on a Victorinox, but not quite as hard as the D2 we've just seen on the Luna. The blade length here is 7.1 centimeters and the overall knife length is 16.7 centimeters. And the handle material is again, G10. The weight is a little bit heavier than the Luna at 57 grams, but not what you would call heavy by any means. The blade tension here is also quite light and there is no blade half stop or other form of finger protection. So you do need to bear that in mind. This knife has a substantial pocket clip which can be removed and it can also be repositioned so the blade is tip up in the pocket. We have here steel liners adding to the overall strength of the knife and you'll notice we have here at the base of the knife a glass breaker. Here it is alongside the Victorinox for scale and again a much more substantial knife as you might expect. I have noticed that Heine Haynes have their own special edition version of this knife in their signature red color, which I'm told is exactly the same, apart from the lack of this bokeh badge on the scales here. What makes this interesting though, is the fact that the Heine Haynes version is nearly half the price of this one here at only 20 pounds. And in my view, that makes it extremely good value for money. Although I do believe stock availability can be patchy. And if you're interested in any of the knives featured in this video, I'll put links in the description below. Next up, we have this. This is the Cricut spelled C-R-K-T-C-E-O. And it's been around for some years now and really stands out from the crowd. But the CEO has a liner lock and a blade length of over three inches, which makes it illegal to carry in the UK on both those counts. Until now, that is because this Cricut CEO is a special version developed between Heine Haynes and Cricut. And this is UK friendly because this version has a non-locking blade and a shorter blade length. The DNA there remains the same. It's a Richard Rogers design at heart and it's the same pen-like inside jacket pocket exec style profile. But the blade length has been reduced from 8.4 centimeters to 7.4 centimeters and the thumb stud and liner lock have been replaced with this nail nick here and cutaway and a spring detent. It clicks smoothly into place requiring a small amount of pressure to release it. It retains the lubed bearing system of the original, the deep carry pocket, which is for tip down carry only and the glass reinforced nylon scales. The heavy duty liners here and the substantial base plate are also evident on this version. As you can see, this is a thin stiletto style drop point blade in a satin finish. And the blade still used here is 8CR13 MOV, which is a little bit uninspiring. It's like a small step up from Victorinox type steel. And I was hoping for something a little bit more interesting. The blade length here is 7.4 centimeters and the overall length of the knife is 17.8 centimeters. Weight is slightly down on the original as you might expect because it's a little bit shorter at 57 grams. Here it is alongside the Victorinox 91 millimeter just to give it a little bit of scale and as you can see the blade on the CEO is longer and much thicker. And now for the interesting bit, the original CEO is around £60, whereas this UK legal version is priced at £40, which again, in my view, makes this great value for money. And I actually prefer the slightly smaller size. And although you can't replace the thumb stud blade flick of the original, 
I think this center located nail nick makes for a neater looking knife. Okay, next up we have the Boca Plus XS, which is what I would call a substantial knife. And this one I am told is one of the most popular UK carry folders of recent times. This sub three inch blade has a great deal of resistance in the slip joint mechanism and for that reason it feels very safe especially when coupled with the finger choil here which makes it virtually impossible for the blade to close on your fingers and is very similar to that on my spyderco ukpk which is one reason why i bought it there is a double-sided thumb stud here for left and right single-handed opening although the blade resistance doesn't make it that easy this one though is new out of the box and I'm sure will loosen up with more use. The blade type here is a drop point with a brushed finish and a hollow grind and the blade steel used is 440C and that is a big step up from the steel used in the knives we've seen so far with the possible exception of Luna's D2. The blade length here is 7.9 centimeters and the overall length is 18.2 centimeters. The handle material, as you can see, is G10 and it's got a nice grippy texture. And that is over some steel liners in here. And the weight is quite hefty at 105 grams. It has a pocket clip that can swap sides, but only allows for tip up carry. Here it is alongside the Victorinox 91 millimeter. And as you can see, we have moved up significantly in scale. And for such a substantial knife, which feels so safe in the hand and with that great 440C blade steel, the 42 pound price tag seems very reasonable indeed. Next up, we have the Kaiser Vagnino zip slip. G10 and custom knife makers Michael Vagnino and Tom Ferry have collaborated on this knife and created a slip joint mechanism with an ever flush backspring. That means when you open the blade, the backspring doesn't flex as it would on most slip joint knives like we see here. And I'm not sure how exciting that is. In fact, my Spyderco UKPK has a similar mechanism and you can see there's no flex there either. Nevertheless, Kaiser are a knife company out of China that focus on good quality materials and great design. And from what I've read, seem to do a pretty good job at a really good price. This is the first one I've handled. And as you can see here, we've got a drop point blade, which is stonewashed with a flat grind. And the blade steel here is an N690 stainless steel, which I believe is similar to 440C. So that's great to see. And the blade length here is 7.4 centimeters and the overall knife length is 17 centimeters. Handle material here is a smooth G10 finish in orange. I think there are other color options. And the weight here is a pretty hefty 105 grams. You have a deep carry pocket clip, but in a fixed position and you have single-handed opening due to this cutout in the blade here. Although the thumb hole is a little bit on the small side and makes it a little bit trickier to get the blade out. There is a half stop, but it's a bit beyond the normal half stop position. So that is a little bit butt clenchy, but there is a finger choil, which like a few we've seen now does a great job to stop the knife folding on your fingers. And that's a feature I really like to see. There's also substantial steel liners in there, adding to the strength. And this thing does really feel solid in the hand. Here it is alongside the 91 millimeter Victorinox just for scale. And as you can see, this is a much more substantial knife for everyday carry. So another example of a great folding slip joint knife, which is very substantial with a great blade steel, feels very safe in the hand and is also very affordable. This is the Bird Turn. And if you think it has a striking resemblance to a Spyderco design, then you wouldn't be far wrong as Bird is a subsidiary of Spyderco targeting the more affordable end of the market. The main difference here between the two brands appears to be the blade steel used. This blade, which is a drop point satin finish with a full flat grind, uses 8CR13 
MOV steel, which is a step up from Victorinox steel. Technically, I don't believe this is classed as a slip joint, but it certainly feels like one. And like many Spyderco designs, the bird offers single hand opening and a finger choil that very effectively prevents the blade from closing on the fingers and jimping for the finger and thumb, which allows for very high levels of grip in use, just like my UK PK, albeit a little bit smaller. The signature wire pocket clip that you find on Spyderco is also carried over to the bird and I really like that. And this can be switched over for left-handed use, but it only provides for tip up carry. The length of the blade is seven centimeters and the overall length of the knife is 16.2 centimeters. The handle material is G10 with a nice grippy finish and there are no liners in here. And to be honest, you don't really need them because it feels rock solid and it also keeps the weight down which is 55 grams and here it is alongside the 921 male victorinox just for scale and as you can see it's much more substantial the bird turn here will set you back around 56 pounds and to put that into perspective the uk pk here is around 90 pounds the uk pk has a better blade steel and is slightly larger but for those on a budget this bird turn is a great option. Next up, we have the Cancept Bevy, and this version is a Heine Haynes Special Edition in their signature red color and with a really nice sheep's foot blade. Interestingly, the standard Cancept Bevy, which is the same, but with a clip point blade, comes in at around 108 pounds, whereas this Heine Haynes Edition here is significantly cheaper at 60 pounds. So you might say this is on the pricey side for such a compact knife, especially when compared with what we've just seen. Starts to make sense though, as you look closer because the fit and finish here on this knife is exceptionally good. And then the big win here is the blade steel used, which is 154 cm, arguably the best out of what we've seen so far and a great knife steel. In the hand, the knife feels really solid. The blade is very thick, some might say too thick, but it really feels like a substantial knife. It has steel liners, but they're skeletonized, so they're cut away inside to reduce the weight. The blade is really easy to open with this large area to grip and a full length nail nick if that were needed. The spring tension is quite light, but not too light. I think they've got the balance about right. And there is a half stop, although unfortunately it is a bit mushy. The H on the blade identifies this as a Heine Hain Special Edition, and the sheep's foot blade here has a full flat grind. The blade length is 6.3 centimeters. The overall length of the knife is 14.4 centimeters. And the handle material is a very smooth feeling G10, which I actually really like. I sometimes find the very grippy G10 scales a little bit too rough. The weight here feels about right at 65 grams. There's no pocket clip here, but there is a lanyard hole. And here it is alongside the 91mm Victorinox for a bit of scale. As you can see, it's a very thick blade. I really like this knife much more than I thought I would and I think it's probably because it feels so solid in the hand and strangely satisfying to open and close. Compared to the others in this lineup this one comes in a really nice box and also includes this pouch which is way too big for the knife but nevertheless really nice to have. As already mentioned the price for this is £60 and when you factor in the quality of the construction and the blade steel used and the way it feels in the hand, I think this is a great option. And here are all the knives featured lined up for comparison in the closed position and here they all are in the open position. Some of the knives featured in this list are my own and the remainder have been supplied on loan by Heine Haynes. They are friends of the channel and we're big fans of what they do. So a huge thank you to them for their support. So there you have it. I hope you found that useful. Thank you as always for watching. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next one.